Hello and welcome to the 2021 PDGA Professional Disc Golf World Championships. You are watching round four coverage from the fort in Ogden, Utah with Big Sexy Barry, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. Let's get into today's grip six low profile. Calvin Heinberg leading the way, 26 under par. Fairway hits, he's in first. Circle one putting, 90%. That is very good. Right behind him is your favorite commentator, Nate Sexton, 25 under par. C2 putting, 43%. That is getting it done from outside the circle. Emerson Keith, the world's beater, man. This guy is just scrappy, and he is right there. Couple back, and Ezra Aderhold, big performance this year at Las Vegas, and he's looking to do another great performance here in Utah. Looking at hole one, par three, 315 feet. All the land here that you can see now is out of bounds. You need to get all the way over this little creek before you're in bounds on the hole. Then it gets a lot tighter. So you'd like to shape something low, kind of through this area over the log, but make sure you put the brakes on before you find the river. This is our MPO lead card. First on the tee pad today, currently sitting at 153 strokes from Tampa Bay, Florida. Let's put our hands together for Calvin Heimberg. <laughs> our next competitor is from Olympia, Washington and is currently sitting at 154 strokes. Let's give a big round of applause to Nate Sexton. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Following Nate, currently sitting at 156 strokes from Argyle, Texas, please give a warm welcome to Emerson Keith. Yeah. Rounding out the card, currently at 157 strokes from Aberdeen, South Dakota, please put your hands together for Ezra Aderhold. Good luck. Fist bumps have been given and it's time to get the show started. Just 36 holes left and it's all technical golf here at the fort. Alvin straight backhand. Going putter. And come up just a bit short. That's going to leave just outside circle one with a slightly low ceiling. And I have to say, Nate, congratulations, man, on making the lead card. What a performance so far. Not only are you absolutely shredding as this looks a little high and right. Get down. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. Yeah, that'll work, mm -hmm. but... To be able to do that and be here in the booth with us, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of stuff to do in one week, man. Congratulations. Well, look, gonna, gonna try to keep it going. Thanks, man. Emerson Keith, a bit lower line, a little bit more turn. I don't think this has enough fade at the end to get back, and that's gonna be a lengthy putt. Obstructed as well. We've all seen what Ezra can do out in the open, and it's going to be exciting to watch him play in the woods. He's not just a one-trick pony. He can. Wow, that hit the bridge. We had no idea. That is so fortunate. That's an inch lower that hits the bridge and is out of bounds. Wow. Yeah, Ezra's first lead guard at a major, major championship. There is no surprise to me his work ethic as he oh, nails this, gets the good break off the bridge, and then makes the 50 foot. That's how you birdie hole one? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that is not repeatable. <laughs> you cannot skip off that bridge twice in a row. It's incredible. But his work ethic is second to none. I mean, can we get two in a row? Not. Today from Emerson on hole one. Yeah, Calvin is just dialed, folks. 
outside the circle has just been his one of his best strengths. I mean, but oh gosh, I don't think that really even took anything off the putt or really changed anything. It just added a couple of more flitter flutters on it. But his stroke has been so pure this week. It's an interesting stance. Yeah, I was a little bit obstructed. And it's hard to get that full reach back into your core to get the full pop behind it when you have something between your legs like that. Just a bit low. Two birdies and two pars to get us started here in round four. Kind of a tricky little hole. I mean, a lot of stuff you can hit coming in and on of the green, and I think it just makes you have to make that 30-ish foot putt for the most part. Looking at a less tricky hole here, hole two, par three, 201. You've got to get across the creek and through the gap, or you could really go around if you want to, but there's that log at the top of that little rise that it tends to be a little bit tough to clear. If you go too fast, there is OB behind, but you just want to get something through the gap, let it settle on the green. Clearly grenade is the play on this hole. Oh, Calvin going backhand, oh goodness. No, I'm kidding. It's straightest shot you've got. Calvin just a bit low, obviously. That's right. He's going to go for the straight forehand instead of the flexy out and around the outside forehand that you sometimes see people go with. He has hit the guardian trees as well. It's a little bit sawed off there with your rat, and that's going to be similar to your round one or round two putt. Yeah, pretty bad. So nobody on the green yet. And this is also heading for the trees. Oh, getting through and staying in the mulch. Good break there for Emerson. So important to get these first two, or at least one of the two, because you know what's coming ahead with three, four, and five, some of the most difficult holes in the entire world championship. And unable to create the magic from round two. So that'll be most likely a par. Can Ezra go back to back outside the circle strokes here? And now. And from that vantage point, you're only able to, you can maybe see cage up. You definitely can't see the base of the basket. And it's really difficult, even just seeing the chains alone, to get the distance right. Get the height right, get the aim right, all of it is very tricky. And you do have OB behind it. I mean, if you rocket it very easily off the top, straight OB off the rim, OB, you could even just airball it, hit the logs, OB. Mm -hmm. So par par start, not exactly what you're looking for here, but Emerson, he's going to step up and he's going to grab his first birdie. That's nice. I mean, lead card, three people par, you pick up the easiest birdie probably on the course and you gain three shots. That's nice. Yeah, this is easily the easiest hole on the course at a 2.57 average, basically a full half stroke below par. That falls in the must get category and... Three players are going to wish they could take another shot at that one, but they will tomorrow. I find that that happens quite often on the lead card. Like, the easiest hole on the course is one that I feel like is missed, and then they're picking up, you know, it, like some of the hardest ones, but the easiest one just kind of slips away, and you're like, huh. I think it's, certainly early in a yes. round, mm -hmm. it, can, it can definitely be that way because the pressure's high on the lead card of the World Championship. A lot of fans, everyone's a little nervy. And that's when you're going to miss a little a simple shot like that. As you settle into the round, I think less common. But mm -hmm. we're looking at hole three, 500 plus feet. You got to carry all the way over the river to be inbounds. This is a crush to look for birdie. What kind yeah. of wind were you dealing with here? Just a little, uh, just a little bit. Not not enough to make you worry too much. It was kind of a left to right. Oh, um, and that is yeah. no. Bueno. You'll rarely ever see anyone hit any of that foliage up there and still make it across safe on the left side of the creek or river. 
It's gotta be clean. Calvin with the power, he can really go high. This is not as wide as I thought he might go. This is pretty safe. Yeah, he's gonna need a good reaction off the trees. And he gets it. Yeah. I mean, that's a look for sure. It's about that drop zone distance, which is 84 feet, I think. He's just got so much power. Typically when you see that line thrown from your average professional, that's still gonna come up 80 feet short, but Calvin able to power that through much closer than others. Ezra very wide, but a little bit low. Oh, that didn't make it across. Oh, that's the width you're looking for, but you need more of Calvin's height. That's the recipe for the park job. You're going with your Star Destroyer. Got the height, but I don't have any of the width. Oh, and that's gonna be tricky. And if that keeps going left, that's gonna be really tricky. This yeah. approach shot is not one you wanna leave yourself outside 50 to 60 feet. Yeah, and now you're gonna be in scramble zone. Forehand roller with the dart. Correct. Okay. As Samuel L. Jackson would say, hold on to your butts. Oh, look at this shot. <laughs> yes. How often do you throw the roller with the dart? <laughs> because I feel like that might be game time decision. Like, I think this is the one. <laughs> For those short range rollers, that's probably the disc I would choose. But uh, ideally, never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Way to scramble. What is this coming as, uh, as far as difficulty, Jerm? It, it's the third hardest, and this is nearly a full half stroke over par. So between two and three, you're looking at a par average. But... One is, is much, much, much more rare to see. The birdie, Calvin with a good effort. Only 12 players in our 207 player field count able to pick up the elusive deuce. Noise. Yeah, I'm happy with that save. Yeah, way out of position. I mean, you're looking for a par though. That's what you're really looking for on this one, especially probably not having the power to just crash those trees like like a Calvin or something. Yeah, it's like a shot I can pull off when I'm not playing for the world title, but to ha to take all that risk and go out over everything, it's a pretty hard for me to do. My body just says, whoa, 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 man. Get it over the creek. Let's, <laughs> let's figure it out later. Uh, hole four, R4, 655. This one is super, super difficult as it is a narrow fairway all the way up with just a slight break to the left before you hit this corner and it goes hard left to the basket. Reaching a landing zone where you can access a look at birdie, almost unheard of. I mean, that's just how tough this tee shot is. Yeah, we're looking at the hardest hole in the course here, guys. This is... Uh the angles are very difficult to navigate to find those landing zones. The distance is, it just seems like it's so much farther than 655 feet. And I found it interesting so far that- Oh, that's great. Our lead cards have, or lead card has kind of just went like mid range, like slower disc off the tee. I feel like they definitely have not only the accuracy, but the power to get to that landing zone. But. Oh, and that was so close to being that landing zone. Yeah, around that tree, I think maybe it could have been a special shot. That's still fine. Yeah. Even from that landing zone, if that gets full flight, as Emerson has shaped this beautifully, oh my goodness, that is so good. That is such a good shot. That is so difficult to get that late flip. Man. But I was gonna say, with your shot, Nate, even if you had gotten around that tree, it, it still might not be in that great of a position to even think about attacking the hole for the birdie. Just that angle is just so severe to the left once you get around the bend. And flick roller again. Sidewinder? Yep. Hey, this is incredible. What? <laughs> it's insane. That's a look. That's definitely inside 80 feet i think yeah it's probably it's, it might be 100 but it was quite a good shot wow yeah so tee shot was pretty good a, a, a favorable kick an incredible roller and you're still 100 feet away on a par four <laughs> it's tough it's a really hard hole folks and calvin with a really late release there 
he's got his work cut out for him. This, it would be uh, amazing. Yeah, this is going to be a bogey at best. I cannot see, I cannot wait to see, pardon me, when we get up to Emerson's shot. I'm guessing he has another sidearm turnover that could very, very easily crest into circle two. Emerson, after that great drive, still electing out of position to just pitch around the corner. Ezra. Ezra, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Ezra didn't go for much there, but this is going for it. Yeah, he's using all the ceiling and maybe more than he has available to him, but <laughs> looks like it maybe got through clean. Yeah, he got up there pretty nicely, but uh, I think still outside circle too. That's good golf from Ezra. That is playing the hole in, in the most reasonable way to play it. Never out of position, tap and par. It feels like a birdie in many ways on this one. And a good save for Calvin. Or actually, it's going to be a bogey, but a bogey save. You got to take a moment here to give a shout out to a fellow North Carolinian Earth Day boy, Lance Brown, on this hole. 117 foot throw in for the birdie, one of Emerson from about 90. Give that to him. Oh, goodness. One of three players on the day, and Emerson almost the fourth. What an effort. Half inch low. So good. I, I thought he had it. Eagle McMahon, Trevor Harbolt, the other two birdies aside from Lance Brown. And that is on the weekend, folks. Thus far, we've had three birdies, and they were all today, none in the first round. Looking at hole five, and like I said before, there's not a lot of room to even fly the drone. This is such a tight tee shot. You need to throw it down here over this log where they put that nice big bullseye and then move right, but not really right. The turnover backhand is probably the ideal play to set you up for a look at this super protected green. On the second shot, I think you'd like to go forehand with a little bit of skip, but there's that log waiting for you. And then if you do clear it and you're coming in hot, you could actually find the river. So I'm going for this little V gap way up here on the left. Oh, yes. yeah. And I hit it perfectly. You hit it perfect. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh, that is so fortunate. Yeah, it's nice. I just, I add that up and that keeps me a little more left. Allows me to find that sure. right side of the fairway. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think that's the third time in a row, in fact, that you've hit that same spot. That's nice. Wow. Emerson, oh, just a bit too right, hitting the one tree on the edge on the right side. I said one, but there, he hit one of the trees on the right side. There are many. You want to see one just piped. Oh, boy. And a little loving kiss at the end to keep him off the trees. That was a fantastic shot. Just the commitment. Incredible on a fairway this narrow. That might go under. Wow. Tough spot, honestly. Because he's now only going to be able to pitch up to where you would like you know, your drive to be. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get much farther than uh, Ezra's drive from where he is. And I worry about that for him because then it takes that kind of touchy sidearm to get into the green, and it's not his best shot. Oh, he's he's going to get aggressive, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a lean-out forehand. I've been there before. It's a few open gaps. Firebird. Oh, yeah. That's it. I think you hit your gap, but you actually meant to hit that time. Uh, yes. 
It was almost as small as the first one, but this time I meant to do it. And is that going around the left side entirely, or that's going no, through the, the through the narrow one? Yeah, through the narrow gaps, right? And, and that's really the best line. That's what Emerson's going to have to line up here as well, I believe. You are correct. And yeah, that is going to be a great save. Excellent execution there on that approach shot. I haven't practiced one from this far up the fairway. This is the best this hole's ever been played, I feel like. I mean, the yeah. drive was so yep. good, and then that approach shot right where he wanted it, so in control. You don't, you can't really draw it up any better than how Ezra played the fifth. I don't know if, from Calvin's angle, if you're going to be able to see all the tiny trees that are the ones you have to avoid. But Calvin misses all of them, and that's a good approach. Yeah. And the logs good. are there to slow it down. So he'll have that for par. We'll call this 25. Call the par. It's about time you get yourself a birdie. Yeah, it's I, been a that's, while. That's kind of how I've been feeling. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I didn't really expect my first birdie to come on this hole, but now that it's here, we're off and running. Yeah, you laid up the the shorty on 18 yesterday, and then now you five straight. That's six pars. Yep, yeah. too yeah. many. Wow, it's too many. But now the floodgates are open. Spectators were out there moving. They had good good crowd control today and a lot of people out there excited. It was really fun. Paul, why don't you take us through hole six? Hole six, par three, 324. You see this bush on the left? You're going to want to go right over this with a slight turn. This, where the drone is flying, is not going to be your fairway. It's up high left, flex forehand or turnover backhand to kind of slide into here. Give yourself a look. Gatekeeper Media Chase Card Check-In, Paul McBeth, just even through the first five holes. This his drive on six. That even represents a birdie on hole three, which is very difficult to get. So he's had some other bogeys out there. That's a good drive, though. That'll be a birdie putt. Even on that shot, though, he's got that little tiny twig, and that's a good indication of this entire hole. There's all kinds of little tiny trees that just even make these putts a little tougher. That's a good one to pick up. Circle's edge, not your typical stance. And there he is, finally under par. More to come from Macbeth later in the round. Yeah, he's, he's five shots back, but... Five world titles say we got to do him the honor of keeping an eye on what he does. That was just a bit too high. Not enough Anheuser angle to keep it low, and that'll be a an 80-foot putt maybe. Maybe just inside that. I like it a lot. And that's why I like it a lot. <laughs> Great shot. With so much power, he really possesses an incredible amount of control. A la Garrett Gerthy, one of my favorite players to watch in the woods. It's also one of the longest throwers in the world. Look at Emerson taking the straightest line to the basket. Hey, I said that wasn't going to be taken. <laughs> Man. He still used a little bit of flex. It wasn't dead straight, but that was beautiful. Rocky Road. Nice. Smooth sailing. I mean, maybe even. <laughs> yeah. Rock right off the road. Money. Dart. Roller. I'm going to put this one in the air. Gets on the knee to open up oh, the ceiling. Oh, what a putt. Two in a row. The floodgates are open. They're open. Nice putt. Look at this. Not a single flood on that putt right there, my friends. 
That was beautiful. Another dart dagger from 70. I like how in the last couple that you've thrown in with the dart, they catch that right chain, but your speed's so good that it just sucks it right in, man. Nicely done. And Man, with that lengthy putt, Ezra's the next farthest out, and he connects. Are we looking at a star frame on hole six? Just got to make this putt right here for Emerson. Yes. Wow. Not a hole you're going to see many star frames on. This is this is a tough one. We were, we were kind of patting ourselves on the back for the star frame, and Emerson said, oh, last round, my group, star frame five and six. Oh, my gosh, five and six. I'm like, okay, well, sorry we aren't those guys, Em. <laughs> well, you know, we'll do our best, but that's incredible. Hole seven, par three, 345. This one's downhill from the elevated tee pad. Really specific, tricky line. You'd like to throw a slight flex or a straight shot right through the gap and then fade hard late before you push the edge of this water. Really interesting green, too. Presents a lot of really difficult putts. One of my favorite greens on the course, and let's check in with Kevin Jones from Gatekeeper Media. Uh, yeah. Mine is four through seven. Fantastic wow. start. I feel like we've seen this putt for him from him before on the same hole. Fun to watch him develop into this, the pro that he is now. Going back with that big germ Thunderbird. And this is splitting the gap again and getting up by the log again. And you are starting to feel a little saucy right now, it looks like. I mean, the floodgates got opened. I, I'm not <laughs> going to be able to hold that back. This is a nice line, a little too straight, but uh, an open-looking putt from 45, maybe 50. I feel like that might be what he's playing for, that straight gap. Give yourself a look. I mean, this fairway is, is very angry. <laughs> yes, it is very Oscar the Grouse like. Yeah, like you throw it down there and it's like, no. Oh. Yeah, that's what it did to Emerson. That well, didn't look like much and it just kind of catches the tiniest branch and just throws them left. The ceiling is perfect. The aim was nearly perfect. Oh, that I thought that was home free. So close. A dusty stance for Emerson. Yeah, I mean, just to get to there mm. takes a really great shot. This was a tricky putt. Oh, man. Ezra, bang, in for birdie from probably 45 feet. Fantastic putt there. Let's see that one more time. Yeah. Hey, look at that slow walk. He knows exactly where that thing's going. Oh, power. That man putts with pace. I've got some little branches here. Oh, Just no. Trying to get it up over that log and miss it low. I see. I, I like the branch that goes high. The branch that goes low, that one's that one's tough for me just because of your shot, I, I really feel like you should be rewarded with that skip to the basket, and that prevents a lot of skip shots that would otherwise be parked. Yeah, I hit that little stump that's like holding up the log. Oh, And I thought, oh, okay. man, if I would have missed that, I really think I would have been 15 feet. Yep. But that's how she goes. Very, very tough green. Good green. Uh, on to hole eight, par three, 310 feet. This one has a small gap with this Y tree. You'd like to go through there high with a forehand as a right-handed player. Try to get it up there flat with enough power to clear the wall and fade right to the elevated basket. There is this little grouping of trees that can slow you down right at the end, but probably won't prevent you from making birdie. There's also OB on the left side, but I haven't seen anybody even close to it this whole time. Oh, Ezra, that 
was a very fortunate tree direction back down the fairway up there and he's even got a look for birdie my goodness yeah this hole feels i mean it certainly is one of the more birdieable holes but when you get off the fairway early it gets much tougher really fast if there were a nate sexton hole at this course it would be hole eight and i'm not surprised to see you park it yeah it agrees with the firebird for sure like the right distance, the right amount of touch and power to get through that gap to just kind of check up right there. Calvin matching your shot fantastically, and that is also parked. So, I mean, I guess he gets a fall flight. I, I, cool. Great. <laughs> Great shot. His was kind of cooler off the berm. Yeah. You know how it bounced and kind of like was a little bit like cooler. Fair enough. Emerson looks a little tight, maybe. Yeah, yeah. but he gets through. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Hear that crowd getting excited. Ezra, 80? Yeah, probably. Ezra, pretty. 80, 80 hold? Oh! Pretty fortunate. Bounced out there to, to set himself up for an easy par and even an outside chance at the birdie. Tough lie here for Emerson. No way. No way. That has happened to him so many times this tournament. Such a good putt from Oh, yeah, it was. From the knee. That is sad. Good putt there from from Nate cleaning up the easy bird and then Calvin's follow flight super shot right here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll see a slow mess on this. <laughs> I, I don't really understand what's happening with Ezra's putt. It's, I mean, not Ezra, Emerson's putt, excuse me. His putt does come in with a little bit of pace, and maybe they're not perfectly dead center. But he does putt fairly flat. I mean, it's mostly flat when it's coming into the chains, and that typically stays in the basket. But he's had at least, at least three spit outs that we've seen just on coverage. Yeah, it's unlucky. I think it. I think that one came from being on the knee, putting upward at the basket on hyzer, mm -hmm. yeah. and then having to kind of push through instead of coming down, and then it just had a little more momentum. So unfortunate break for sure. Flying up hole nine, the only par five. This is the mandatory tree we're passing now. A great drive will get you up into that area if you can get 400 plus off the tee down the tunnel. And then you're presented with a choice of two gaps. You can go a little bit wider left with a forehand, or you could play up the middle. This mound really protects the green, though. It's so tricky to get your skip through. Gatekeeper Media chase card check-in with Macbeth. Minus two to this point. See if he can show us that big drive, and I think he uh, can. That looks smashed. Oh, my gosh. Still turning and skipping to the perfect, perfect landing zone. Wow, and you can see those two gap options. Looks like he is going to take the forehand. Is he going to go left or flex down the middle to I would the right? Think, I would think flex down the middle. And you're right. And this is staying wide enough. Does it get around the corner? Whoa. Oh, no. Stop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That wow. is a tappin eagle. Stop. That is a tappin eagle. Oh gosh, that is incredible. And just like that, four through nine. Pretty good nine. Yeah, two through two through eight, decent. You you I think he's looking at being at four already through eight. If trying to make up some ground on the leaders, but four through nine, you'll take that for sure. So you ended up going with the champ orc. Yeah, oh. not a great shot. I was looking for a little bit more level. That was a nose up and didn't get a ton of distance, but it's in the fairway. Yeah, and right side to where it really shapes well for a nice backhand hyzer. Get yourself a little extra distance around the corner. Ooh. I like. 
Oh, and hitting the logs, redirecting it into a great spot. That's that was a great kick. We couldn't see that from the tee. So for perspective, that's probably 50 feet back of where we saw Macbeth just land. Yeah, I would think so. This is overcooked, but a good kick. Calvin doesn't have quite the forehand that Paul has as far as distance, but um, he can do some pretty tricky things with his backhand. He could be looking Whoa. at a potential eagle. Emerson, early tree, hard right kick. That is going to make this whole place so nasty from here on out. <gasps> Scatters the spectators. Oh, no. Ankle biter right there. Hey, he's got another hard one. This and he is, scatters him again here. Oh, this is an incredibly important time for Emerson. He's got to throw a good shot right now. So this is his fourth. <laughs> Miracle bogey from there. Yeah, that would be pretty special to get a bogey from there. Sidearm rollies again. Yeah, I got a branch right in my way. Been doing good work with that forehand roller. Oh, hey, guy. There's one person there. <laughs> We've seen disc race 80 miles an hour through crowds, and not one person's ever been hit. And you throw a flick roll, and you hit one dude's ankle. Jeez, I had no idea there was anybody up there. <laughs> you need to go around the corner and look, Nate. I mean... <laughs> Just the, the surprise of that guy. He's looking for a disc in the air, and then it just hits his foot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Here is Calvin, staying straight, needs a skip, gets Love a skip. It. Love it. That'll be a blind putt, but it will be a putt for Eagle. Again, yeah, with his high kind of lofty putt, that sets up nice. It wouldn't even be the top four putts we've seen him make this weekend yet. Emerson, flex forehand, denied <sighs> by the big cottonwood. So close. I'm going star X Cal here. And you got to go down the wide gap. Big skip. Yeah, you'll have something over there, a little 40 footer. Can you see the basket from where that landed? I can. Okay. I will be able to. Okay. Ezra catches a little bit of foliage on that right side. And I can't help but wonder if that spit out, you know, kind of got in the mentals of mm. Emerson. I mean, that's a lot to endure over a long period of all these rounds and getting a few of those maybe. And Emerson did not clear the mound there with his sixth. So he's up on the mound. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That is going to be a tricky putt for the double bogey seven. This for Eagle. <laughs> Just low and left. Did you walk over to a stance to see if he could see it, or did you not care? I didn't. I, I didn't care, I guess. I was busy with some other stuff. <laughs> like this. Oh, no way. Like a little 45 footer of my own. And yeah. there it is. That, oh, well, you technically will be tied because Calvin will have a tap in. Well, I wonder if Calvin walked over to see if he could see the basket or not. Oh, right. I was just curious if he happened to be over there. Par for Ezra. This for a seven. Thank goodness. Get off the hole. Let's get out of here. Let's Good go putt. Let's go oh, to the back nine. It was a great putt. Yeah. It's a seven that you're not happy about, but it's not an eight. It's really one of the easier holes, I feel like, on the course as far as taking par. Yes. Because you can just chuck it OB and still get par pretty easily. Off the tee, that is. Yeah, I've done it. I unfortunately know the routes to doing that as well. 
All right, that is the front nine, a bogey free four under for Nate Sexton, and that ties him atop the leaderboard with Calvin Heinberg at 29. Chase closely behind by James Conrad storming up with a six under front nine, just two back. Kevin Jones, he is also there, and Macbeth, four down the front nine. You saw that incredible eagle. You know he's going to be there in the end. He always is. We've got nine more this round, and then one more round. We are we are there. Come right back for the back nine from the PDGA Professional World Championships presented by Grip6. Grip6.